Welcome everyone for another Soul Cafe. It's very, very, very healing to be here with you today. And today we are going to discuss, we are going to expand the topic of how religion, um, how religion, <laughs> oh my God, how religion see our relationship with our body. <laughs> I'm just, just trying to remember the words in English. Yeah, so this is a very rich topic that we we were talking last week, and yeah, we can go deeper with this healing. Um, and first of all, if you are watching from YouTube, please feel free to like and subscribe. And let's just introduce ourselves. My name is Renato, and I'm speaking from England. Hi, hi. My name is Anupama, and I'm speaking from India. Hello, my name is Cornelia and I'm speaking from Austria. That's great. Yeah, so we were talking about last week uh, how religion see our relationship with our body and every single religion see in a different way. And what, what's coming up for me now is uh, how we how we show, like how we how we deal with our body when it comes to other people, like what's coming up for me, like some religions, you have to hide your body. Mm -hmm. Like I, I think you and Obama could have some examples in India, especially I think in the north of India. Um Actually, in Hinduism, we don't really have that. Uh, I see it in some religions, like I, I well, in Islam, yes, when I, I was born and raised in the, in the Middle East. So the, the women have to wear black and uh, where I was in the UAE, they also had to cover their face. So you could only see their eyes, you know, you can't see anything and their hands. You can't see anything else. Uh, and the men would wear white, uh, you know? So, and uh, uh, that was the only, um, you know, like distinction I saw um, between Islam and Hinduism for us. We didn't have any issue of um, what to wear, what women uh, need to wear. But, um, and even when we go to the temples, there were, except in some temples, like I remember there is a um, Krishna temple in my hometown where they don't allow us to um, walk in if we are wearing, if the girl, like if a girl is wearing, or a guy also, they don't allow pants or anything that resembles pants. So e e even um, the pajamas, like, you know, we wear a salwar kameez, so we have the salwars or the pajamas, even that they don't allow because you must wear either a sari or a skirt, uh, a long skirt, or, uh, and the men need to wear what we call the lungis or, you know, for, for, for the temple attire. So e even the men are not allowed to wear uh, pants. Um, they have to wear the, like, the, like the traditional attire. Um, so that was the only thing I saw uh, in terms of restrictions. In the North, um, I'm not too sure because I'm from South India, but from what I've seen, uh, there are some customs and some parts of North India where the women have to cover their head, especially if they're, ma if they're married. Um, and when they're in public or sitting in, in front of the elders of the family. Um, and in some, um, some cultures, some, some religious uh, groups, they also wear a mask. I think that's the gens, if I'm not mistaken. Some part of the gens, like we have so many, um, you know, we have one religion, but we have so many subdivisions to it and uh, it differs in the different parts of the country. So, you know- Is it, is it more about religion or about the, the local culture? How do you think? It's all, it's connected, it's all interconnected. 
So it's about the culture and we have the vast, vast cultural differences and, and the language differences across India. Uh, the religion is one, but you know, there are many parts to it. And then there are uh, other um, aspects to it. Like you have Sikhism, you have Jain Jainism, you have, like you have Buddhism, you know, you have um, different teachers or gurus that are, fo that are followed by the Sikhs and by the Jains. Um, yeah, so yeah, we, but, but I don't know about um, clothing restrictions that much in the North. Um, I don't think there's more than that. In the South, we don't have that either. We don't, we don't ask the women who are, who are married to cover their heads or wear a particular attire. Of course, being Indian, uh, they do like that the Indian woman wears the sari. Um, but even that is okay. It's like more, at least in my state, they are pretty liberal that way. But I do know that in Islam, uh, they do follow that. So the Muslims in India do um, have that, where the, where the women, when they step out, have to wear black. And uh, uh, some sects of them, you know, also still cover their face. So only the eyes can be seen. But some others don't have that depends on what aspect of Islam they are following. It's again, the, there are subdivisions there, you know? So, yeah. So th this is what was coming to my mind. I don't know, I was, I know that the initial topic we had was uh, um, healing the religious wars through, you know, through the, you know, through the, through, through what we do. Um, and I was also, um, uh, it kind of reversed in my head, it says, healing um, war on, on religion, you know, and war that is given in the name of religion. Or, you know, a lot of wars are uh, for the religion. You know, a lot of wars are to enhance the separation uh, between the religions and within the religion between those people too. So it's not that in the that that religion is peaceful by itself and they are warring with other religions within that religion itself there are so many divisions um which is why i'm like <laughs> wait in which part of the country what do they follow so you see there are so many divisions and the war is not just religion to religion it's even within the countries within the religions it's everywhere you know people having this discord like um, like, I mean, like I said, in, in Islam, you have uh, divisions, you have the Sunnis and the Shias, and then people who don't believe that in Hinduism, you have, you know, the ones who are liberal, then there are the ones who are fanatic, the ones who are okay, you know, people trying to impose the religion on others, and within the religion itself, like even when I'm a Hindu, um, there are people who try to impose their ideas on other Hindus, you know? So that's what I mean. The war doesn't, it's not just Hindu Muslim or it, like Muslim Christian or Hindu Christian. It's not just that. Even within the religions, there is a war. Do you think inside the religion there are like people more conservative with some- yeah. Like if you take Christianity itself, you can see, right? You have the Catholics, yeah. the Protestants, you have the, uh, Syrian Catholics, you have the, uh, oh, what are they called? The, the ones who don't wear any jewelry, Pentecost. Um, mm -hmm. Then you have, you have so many subdivisions. I was like, really? I thought it was just Christian. No. I didn't know you are Protestant and Catholic. And what is that? You know, but like when I was in school, I heard these I'm, I'm a Protestant. I'm like, what is that? But you go to church, right? Aren't you Christian? Like, yeah, but I'm a Protestant Christian. I'm like, oh, okay. I didn't know that, you know? And then I learned about the other subdivisions. So you see, in every religion, there's a principal religion and there are so many subdivisions. And those subdivisions are very protective of their subdivision. You mm. know? They don't allow uh, inter-religion inter subdivision, like, you know, marriages, it's it's just scorned, it's shunned, shunned, and of course, interreligious marriages are just happening more liberally now. Intercast. Yeah, 
I like what you say now, and they try to protect with these rules, yeah. differently in every religion. And yeah. uh, that's what I so love in the unionism. Yeah. You don't have to follow a rule, and the protection comes not from controlling your body. Um, your protection comes from God and feeling, um, feeling these boundaries. You ex um, you ex um, you evolve naturally in, in doing your inner healing work and um, inviting God also in your relationship with Each God. Other. Yeah, and what why I brought this up is it go it goes to show how much people are basing their importance on the outside. On a, like religion was created as a path to God. And people are trying to protect that. And it doesn't really, if you look at it, it doesn't make sense. Why would you need to protect the pathway to God? Because ultimately we all go there. So people need to know that, you know, you don't need to protect something on the outside. You need to revere and respect the God on the inside. You know, then all these subdivisions in the religions will also disappear. And even the stigmata that this religion is better than that religion will also disappear. Because that's not true. Like every religion, what is the ultimate goal? Who is at the center of every religion or every subdivision of religion? It's God. Yeah. Religion is only your means of how to be with God, how to communicate with God, how to understand what God has created for you and how to uh, use it to serve you the best because everything was created and then you were put here. Yeah, they just call God in different names, but actually everyone, every religion just wants yeah. God. And it's just a matter of how you perceive God. Exactly. And like you said, yes, every religion call, calls God in a different name. But if you look at the meaning of that word, which is used to address God, it is the one who is known by many names, but the one and only. Yeah. There is only one. So every religion proclaims this universal truth that cannot be ignored anymore, that what who you call God, every religion refers to the same. Because every religion, whatever you call God, it translates to the same, that the one, the one and only, the supreme being. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, go on. Yeah, no, so when, when they re re realize that, you know, then the internal journey really can proceed. They can go forward in peace and they can let, they can start relating to each other, knowing that everybody wants this religion purely for the same reason, to connect with God. Nobody wants religion for any other reason. You know, and you don't have to force anybody to follow any religion because ultimately what, what is the religion? It is about God. And that's what we hold of prime importance here. Do you know, Anupama, mm -hmm. do you know you said about inside the religion, there are many different Part of it that try to control, they try to impose things. Yeah, be, before I met um, the unionism, mm -hmm. I was going going like um, uh, like spiritualism. Mm -hmm. um, before that, when I was a child and teenager, I was mm -hmm. go going through uh, Christianity because I was born in a Christian um, yeah. environment. So. I was in the Catholic Church and the Protest Protest Church, and all those related to Christianity, and they really really fight against um, these things. And we were talking about how you wear, how you show your body to other people. Mm -hmm. And yeah, even in the Protestant Church, which you can you can find in many many of them, many types, they don't agree with each other. Mm -hmm. In some, like more conservative, human have to cover not e e everything, but let's say from from the neck to the to the feet. Yeah. 
yeah and and the, you know peace is not there um i think they believe they are more purified mm. you know if they cover their body they are let's say less sexual because they don't show their body but it's a it's a place of control yeah and sacrifice they believe that sacrifice is the way to go yeah yeah that's like with our body the relationship we have with our religion also influences our relationship with our body mm -hmm. so we um, have sometimes pattern because of our how we are raised in the religion like Renato says that we have to cover or we that we are protected and controlled on the outside and we act and uh, do with our body not how we feel and how it would put for us but how we yeah. learned to maybe not leak any energy yeah because the body is never given that kind of reverence right it's just like we were saying it's just something that needs to be covered more and something that should not be looked upon And they say it's because the, it's sacred, but it's not really treated that way, you know. Um, okay. But all the ancient texts talk about uh, your body is your temple, mm -hmm. you know. But we don't really look at it. We try to hide it. We don't look at it. There's body shaming. There's you know so so many things that work against the body. So when you First, come to the space of peace that this entire life is about, you know, being in connection with God once again. Uh, then this also comes into, into the picture that, okay, then how to live this life? I, I live it through this body that I have. I cannot live it through anything else. I cannot live it through this water bottle. I can't transform my essence into this water bottle and live my life. So, you know, we have to come to the understanding that it's not about anything else. It's about reconnecting with God and through what God has given us to use in this lifetime, which is your body and all the contents of your body. You know, your body is not an empty shell just rolling around from place to place. There are many organs in the body that function beautifully together. Like no... Um, scientist or supercomputer has even today been able to decipher the how the brain functions you know how every part of the brain functions but they do know that we don't necessarily utilize a hundred percent of our brain capacity we haven't discovered it yet uh, the only few who've discovered it are those who have been in meditation for many 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 years like the monks you know so that's what we need to focus on. Like, if you want to use your body well, then this is the piece you must come back to, understanding that it's all about communion with God. And that is that is our prime focus here, through, through, you, through unionism, to remember that and to uphold that. And when people approach us, like, yes, we go through the twin flame route, but It's also because it's, it's the same pathway. It's taking us to the same destination. So, yeah. yeah how about you know, this, this topic about how is your relation or relationship with your body is so rich. Mm. And last minute, literally, when we started this live, this part of the subject uh, came up to my consciousness for a reason. Today in my work, because we work like with sales mm -hmm. and all market is from like all over the world. So I have to contact companies from many, many countries and everyone there do the same. And we just sent like a brochure, mm -hmm. like by email, like a data sheet of the information of the product to the countries to the companies from other countries and there is a page in that brochure that there is a, a woman almost 
naked, like bikini, mm -hmm. which is completely normal in the Western world. But then the company was sending this brochure to countries, like to Islamic countries for so long. Okay. And somebody just noticed that today, like, oh my God, we have to stop it. We cannot send this, you know, brochure to, like, um, they said, Pakistan, they said, they said like, like a list of, of, of countries. And it was on my, on my consciousness when, when we started this life and I wanted to share with you because, um, yeah, at some way, it just reminded me when I was going to the church when I was a child, you know, like there is this thing like, because uh, it's not appropriate to leak or, or sexual energy. But at the same time, in some religions, like you cannot show anything. And Jeff and Shalia um, says about how you can leak your your yeah. your sexual energy. It can be if you by withholding also. Yeah, mm -hmm. hold, uh, holding mm -hmm. or being open like to yeah. other people. And I think it's all about how you feel mm -hmm. about it. Uh, personally, if I go to the to the beach, I feel comfortable because people are comfortable as well and there is no intention that there, there, there is no any feeling I think the thing is about the intention and, and how you feel and you are not responsible for other people as well this is something that was coming up for me and I just remember that a few years ago I I would struggle with that and doing this in the work, I feel so much peace and I don't feel this pressure, you know, from the outside or even from myself. It's, it's really healing. Right. That's very good that you brought that up because that shows the extremist, you know, um, notion that either you cover up completely or you wear a bikini. <laughs> I mean, like, you know, would they show a man in a Speedo? In that brochure, they wouldn't. So why a woman <laughs> in a bikini, <laughs> you know? So yeah, it's about balance. It's about knowing what works for you without leaking your energy either ways by, like you said, overdoing it or by withholding. It. Mm -hmm. And this used to trouble, you know, trouble me a lot because I used to think that being a woman means wearing those kind of outfits, which are revealing. And it used to make me very uncomfortable <laughs> and I would never like it. I would prefer something else, but it felt like that is what I should wear, you know? And uh, I, when I saw girls wearing that, those mini skirts and, you know, all those, I was like, oh, okay, this is why I'm losing out is what I used to think. But now it's like, no, I'm not. Like, I'm glad I didn't go that way because it's not that you can't wear a mini skirt it depends on your like you said your intention behind it what are you wearing it for but you do, at the same time you don't have to to be considered a woman or to be considered feminine you know it's not about your external your feminine energy is within you same yeah. as as the, the like masculine energy is within you it's not necessary what's on the outside that's defining us and what we've discussed all this while is everything which is on the outside, which people have been giving so much importance to. And that's why the discord around, you know, with body, with, with, with our brothers and sisters. Always it's the really need of, of to prove anything to our other people, if they are powerful for how they look like or mm -hmm. on the outside, you know, um, yeah. yeah. You can let, and like you rightly said, it doesn't have to trouble us or bother us what somebody cho chooses to wear or not. As long as what you are wearing, your intention is, um, you know, balanced in place. That's all that matters. Ultimately, it's about us. 
and what and how we heal and that's why it's good like if anything we know if anything upsets us we know what to do we use the use the mirror exercise um, and if we have trauma we and we sign up for map and we heal the upset within us and then we realize that in that peaceful place it we feel much better about ourselves so we feel peaceful wherever we are so yeah, it's a good thing too that you brought that up. The mirror exercise is so powerful because you take your power back to a, to yourself yeah. and you just, you naturally let go of this pressure, you mm. know, of, oh my God, people will think this about me. You just don't care about anything on the outside because mm. it's just about your relationship with God. It's only about how God feels about you. On the inside. On the inside. Yeah. yeah. So it's an inside job. <laughs> Taking your power back, being connected with God, also with your body. Yeah. How how Anupama said it's a temple, and it's yeah. wonderful being connected, and having upsets with any part of your body. Yeah. We can heal this here, and we can explore it in unionism, and not. Uh, like in the other religions where we have to control it, that we can heal this pattern of control, how we feel good and how I express my femininity and how I like to be, yeah. how I, I like to express my relationship with my body. Yeah. And yourself, with your, with, with your divine self, how you express yes. yourself. Yeah, that's how you... That's what you embody, and that's what you mm -hmm. give to the world. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to share something with you that just came up for uh, for me. Yesterday, I was in in the LGBTQ live, and we talked about um, you know our body. You know, there are many transgender people in the community that they found out that they are the divine masculine instead of the divine feminine. Mm -hmm. And I shared this worry that I had at the beginning when I joined Twin Flames Universe, that, uh, okay, I am the divine feminine, so I supposed to change something mm -hmm. on my body because I was seeing people changing. I was like, yeah, but I'm happy with my body. I don't have any problem. I, I don't feel separated from my body. I mean, happy exactly who who I am. And then I was like putting this pressure on myself that I should look more feminine to embrace my femininity. Mm. Or I should look, behave like this, you know, express myself like this, because I was seeing myself separated from myself. Mm. And um, as I started to do the inner work, you know, connecting to God and to myself, like being present with myself, I realized that my connection with God within myself is, is very intimate. And I feel like I can really be myself when I connect it to God. It's like, it's something natural. It's not something that I control how I look like, I just look at the mirror and I say, wow, I look beautiful and I love myself. You know, like, doesn't matter uh, what clothes I'm, I'm wearing. You just embrace your yourself. And yeah, the femininity, because we are all divine feminists here, right? Yeah, it's, uh, it's inside out. It's not outside in. This is something I have been feeling recently as I as I connect to myself. How how do you feel guys about this? Yeah, you're absolutely right. Your connection with God is beyond your body. Your body is just contains a a part of who you are. Your soul is not within your body. Your body is a part of your soul it's like your soul is beyond the body itself you know, your your soul cannot fit into this human body that's what they say so you know your uh, because uh, there was the notion that you know uh, the, our soul is with yeah a soul is within but it's just a part of it 
are in, that's what keeps guide, guiding us. When we say inner guidance, higher self, it's, you know, so a connection with God is beyond the body. So coming to peace with the body you have in this lifetime is very important. You know, how it looks. And then um, cho choosing to uh, embrace it the way, you know, you co-created it initially, like when you took birth, you chose a form, right? And then with the choices we made in life, with the experiences we had, the form uh, transformed. And now it's about, you know, since we're going back to ourselves, it's about you can accepting where you are and then doing the inner work, the, he the healing to, to have the body that you originally planned to have, you know, the one that is healthy, uh, helps you to do what you're destined to do here, you know, and to do it completely, you know, to fulfill your purpose. So yeah, you're absolutely right. It's the connection within. Yeah, I feel the same too. Um, accepting where I am right now fully and completely and loving me where I am right now and grounding in where I am right now and going from this place and exploring is so safe. Just exploring and um, trying out something. I'm just doing how I, I'm, I'm really following my good feeling here. Yeah. I try something new clothes or I try to make do some makeup and then I'm doing no makeup. I'm just exploring myself from the only from the inside, how I feel in the inside. Yeah. And um, always, like you said, completely loving myself where I am right now with my health and how I look. And so I can change peacefully into my divine body. Too. When I, because when I choose to claim my divine body, the steps, God guides me all the steps. And I just follow the, the good feeling here. It's safe. Yeah, we mature into our divine bodies. Yeah. And I, your, the chakra system that is there behind you also um, guides me to speak about, you know, we, we were saying about honoring the body, the body is the temple and every organ inside, like every chakra is connected to one or two organs, you know? Mm -hmm. So when those are in balance, then those organs are also in balance. And any imbalance can cause those organs to be in imbalance. Uh, so when you're in stress, most of the organs and hormones are under stress too. So. <laughs> So ba like balancing the chakras, you know, because they, they, are, they are all energy centers. You know, and they're connected to different parts of your body, different organs in your body. So coming back into alignment, getting that energy flow going, releasing the blocks, releasing the internal wars, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. so interesting how our chakras are connected to each yeah. other. Yeah. Yeah, they're connected. Like we have um, three, the heart chakra in the center, three above, three below. The heart is the connection for those. And then, you know, you we have, uh, apparently we have more in the higher realms, like beyond the seventh and below the root. But we don't discuss that much because it. if you're going deeper into that, then the topic is brought up but these the these seven are the most commonly known and it's enough to know that you know what to uh, heal if you're you know face like if you're claiming your power back then you're healing your uh, so your solar plexus chakra that's your that's your power center you know, but you know this Manipura sector. this topic is is very if if you feel like it's very important you know about the chakras because if the heart chakra is the, is the center, you have three chakras under and three chakras, uh, let's say, uh, above. And you heal the heart chakra, like you give love with yourself, you expand this love, everything heals. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. You, you, do, you do that. Uh, sometimes 
uh, you know, if that if a chakra is blocked, then you need to focus on it a little more. Like when we claim our, po our power back, that's because the, the solar plexus is, you know, it can, it can be both. It can be underactive or overactive. So when it's not in balance, when your chakra is not in balance, it has different effects. So bringing it back into balance, bringing all your chakras into balance are very important. Yeah, doing my, my journey, the chakra that I have been uh, uh, balancing more, like healing more is the solar plexus. Nice. Very, very clear. I've, I've got many card readings in the, in the community and for myself is, and I, I always have like, like, like a solar plexus pain. I don't know if you ever had mm -hmm. doing this journey, like since, you know, the illusion of separation, mm -hmm. I started to feel that in my solar plexus, like a pain. And I felt it, I, I thought it was physical. But it was not, it was my chakra and the solar plexus. So once I started to give love to myself and this part of myself that was not feeling loved, you know, through the mirror exercise, I just feel this, this relief. You know, you just feel peaceful and all the chakras is beautiful. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. It's, it's wonderful. For me, it's been a lot of root chakra foundation that I've been healing, like, you know, uh, releasing the old foundation and, you know, re um, rebuilding it with love and peace. So yeah, root chakra. But yeah, definitely. I mean, and for so and, and solar plexus too, like if you have any stomach issues, liver, gallbladder, spleen, these are all related to the, sol the, the, the solar plexus, you know. And I was uh, watching something where they were speaking. It was uh, a sink because they were talking about the, li the, the liver. And even I was, uh, you know, uh, re reading up about it. Liver stores anger. So, you know, when you're releasing anger, then you heal your liver too. So it was some, it was a, it was a TV show. So it was, <laughs> it was a nice sink there to to hear, hear that from them too. So you see your body is so uh, beautifully designed. Mm, if you don't know how to use it, then you end up misusing it. You know? And that's what we're learning to come back into balance, to really respect our body and to trust. Because everything comes through that. The chakras are within the body somewhere. They, they're not in a particular, like our brain is here. We know that the third eye chakra is in this region, but there is no pinpointing that it's in this place. Yeah, it's like an energy center. It's an energy center. So, and to know that even our core, uh, God is within, everything is within. So, you know, you really need to really uh, get in touch with your body again and heal it and ask your body what you need to do body always responds because your inner guidance always comes through yeah sometimes you just need to eat something yeah you know my body always communicates with me when something doesn't feel good when i start to get a bit overwhelmed or mm. anxious sometimes i think it's because of a specific thing and then it happened last week i was like i'm feeling anxious or overwhelmed Okay, so I choose to listen to my body. What do I need to feel peaceful here? And then I felt I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, I had some food and I felt great. <laughs> I was like creating upset that it didn't exist. Yeah. Sometimes it's, it's, it's something that you need to give to yourself like physically. Mm. And or sometimes it can be something that you need to heal, it can be an upset. And uh, it's important to just stop and do the mirror exercise. Jeff actually yeah. said last week in a, in a, in a live mm -hmm. that the mirror exercise is like, is like a prayer mm -hmm. in, re in religion that you practice every day. Every day. You, don't have, you don't have to chase upsets. No. You know, like, I need to find an upset within myself so then I can heal. It's like, because this is a self-abuse. 
when you like you are chasing an, an upset you are not loving yourself but then if you just choose to be present and love yourself if an upset comes up you love yourself there and choose to hear and if you don't have like clearly an upset you just find that part of yourself that doesn't feel so peaceful just more or less and then you love yourself there and you we will notice that what you need you know to feel peaceful if it's only love if it's more attention if it's uh, a bath or it's uh, food you know or go cycling whatever or, or go shopping for that particular <laughs> outfit to wear or shoes anything your anything. body knows what it wants you just have to listen to it you know and that's what it's all about connecting within and loving yourself because that is the basis of everything everything we we are here for that you know every time i ask god what should i do here I, I, the only answer here is love yourself and i'm like oh okay all right that's what i have to do okay i'll do that <laughs> because it's so different from earlier like what do i have to do okay do this do that do that do this i'm like oh god i'm so tired now it's just love yourself and then once you've given yourself that love you have the energy and you have the solution Yeah oh, and we we as the divine feminines we just need to be open to receive receiving from yeah. god yeah and most of my life i was living through the masculine energy of always giving 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 so i'm really learning how to be in the feminine energy of receiving that's why when i ask god for something he says love yourself receive love like you know teaching me how to receive love and that's that's the that's the blessing of listening to your body of respecting and paying attention to you and that resolves conflict so we and how resolve that conflict and how so, do you feel when you are open to receive how does that feel it feels very uh, different from what i experienced in life before it feels pleasant relieving um peaceful once i let go of the anxiety that i just have to love myself i don't have to do anything else you know releasing that old pattern and it feels like you know i can just you know like you know like cats you just relax what you want and then king of the or queen of the house just you know? relax yeah. yeah and then do what you need to do like walk around get your food you know or poop or go for a walk and then relax so <laughs> it's yeah it's and then yeah do do what you need to when you're in that relax when when i'm in that relaxed state of receiving uh that's when i i know what to do next and how to do it so i said so when you love yourself the solution you were seeking comes to you through someone else or you know through you yeah i love what you said What about you, Cornelia? How do you feel about it? When I'm in the state of receiving, mm -hmm. I feel also very relaxed and peaceful, and I feel this oneness with God. And it's also different than um, I experienced in the past. And it's just so, this juicy feeling Jeff and Shelley had talked about. And, mm. It's also free. I feel so free, and it's I'm in the flow, and everything feels good, and I can just relax, and I'm I'm just trusting God's guidance, and yeah, it's like um, I'm just in peace here. Yeah. Yeah. It's like you you give it to yourself, and you are open to receive yes. from God, and God gives you divine energy. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. That's why we feel. energized to do something to do more like we may end up doing more than we did before but we're not feeling drained or tired or like oh i need to just crawl into bed now you know there's that energy that's just keeping you going so that's the best part and then you know when to stop you know when to feed your body water or food or lie down and then come back 
or like you said, go for a walk or shopping, whichever. <laughs> you can have something. You know, online shopping nowadays, I guess. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Black Friday <laughs> today. Oh yeah, the Black Friday sales are on. I did my Bath and Body Work shopping. <laughs> We have a buy to get to offer. Oops. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you know, it, it was just something that felt good to do. And that's what I end up doing. I do things which feel good to me. I'm not doing things under duress, under pressure. Yeah. How, how about you, Renato, when you're in that receiving energy, how do you? <clears throat> I feel like, I feel like that card that I, I received on the LGBTQ life yesterday, mm -hmm. the card was be centered. Mm. I literally feel centered, safe, protected, and enough with myself and God within myself. I, I just feel whole because yeah. this, this journey is all about, because you are already whole. Yep. You know, it's all about you recognize and you feel that you are whole. You recognize, you know, with yourself. And I feel this way. I feel blissful. I feel peaceful. I feel like, yeah, life is good. Yeah, it is. And sometimes, like, when you ask me how, it, the feeling is so deep, so different, so pure that I, I don't know what word to use for it. You know, it's like there's no word that I know the meaning of that would accurately describe that feeling of when, when I feel connected with God or when I feel that peace of, ah, oh, this is my truth, you know? That, it's like, that, um, yeah, some people describe as you feel like you are flying, you feel like, some people say you feel high, but not in that way that some people consider. It's like, um, because it's a very grounding grounded energy yeah. is very grounded and because you are connected with yourself yeah. you're not attached yeah. to illusions or the outside yeah only within yeah for me it's kind of like well for want of a better reference it, it's like how i would feel after enjoying a delicious slice of chocolate cake raised to the power of infinity that kind of like, oh, that satisfaction, you know, that, oh, this is the feeling, going deep. And like you said, it's grounded. I'm not feeling, I'm not having that high and then low. Yeah. It's steady. You know? And of yeah. course, uh, and in that steadiness, whatever has to come next to heal will come so that you go deeper into this mm -hmm. feeling. I think was Jeff, was Jeff that said once that high is trouble. Yeah. Because after after high, have the low. You have the yeah, and you don't want that. You want you sustain, don't want that. Want sustain. That's why when we sustain and listen to ourselves, like you said earlier, Renato, you don't have to go looking for the upset. When you are at that peace and you maintain it and continue, then God always takes you deeper. So the next level of what whatever may be in the way will come up naturally to heal. Yes, and this feels good. This is all peaceful and really grounded. And from this grounded place, you can go deeper and this is safe to, to feel a real, a really ground yeah. your healing also and to ground in, in accepting your body and where you are and go from there deeper. And this yeah. all, you don't have to push down anything. It comes all naturally. God guides you really love it. I feel God guides when I'm really listening to God and I'm not controlling. Yeah. It is always really gentle and uh, compassionate. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It only feels hard when we are trying to get something from the healing. Yeah. Yeah. But otherwise, no. And of course, when, when you heal something, there will be upheaval, but it's about just choosing your peace through that, to choosing the peace that you felt when the healing was complete, cho choosing not throughout the upheaval and letting whatever has to leave, leave. Yeah. Nice, I mean, it's nice to connect with ourselves again. 
Yeah, it is. I'm going to check the comments. Oh, see sure. if we yeah. have someone. Um, I'm Rapali Kompo. Sorry if I, I didn't pronounce your name. Uh, I'm Rapali, yeah. I'm Rapali, yes. Yeah, said An Anupama and a, a heart and a flower. <laughs> like like send, sending love to you, Thank Anupama. You, uh, I receive. I send you love too, Amrapali. Thank you for being here. Yeah, and also said, even the churches are also se separated. I think, I think was talking about you know the religions in the beginning of the discussion. Mm. Yeah, that was the only, only comments that we we had. Yeah. yeah, thank you very much for joining us. Yeah. Ah, so how are you guys feeling? I feel good. I feel every discussion connects us also deeper, you know, because we talk about what we have uh, seen, what we have healed through and how we're feeling. So, you know, that also is uh, where, yeah, that's how I feel. Yeah, I feel good. What about you, Cornelia? How do you feel? I feel also good. I feel also this that we are going deeper in the connection and uh, with the topics. And I feel complete for today. Yes. Yeah, I feel, I feel complete too. Yeah. It's so beautiful that uh, we started with uh, like a topic and then it's was flowing and flowing and we explored so many things yeah. around the same topic. Yeah, we went where God wanted us to go. Yeah, with the flow. That's what being in the flow is. And not, and being grounded in that, like not, like receiving the message of what we had to share today. Yeah. So, thank you everyone for today. And yeah, and if you are watching from YouTube, please like and subscribe. So, we see you next week for another Soul Cafe. Yes. Have a nice Bye. week. Thank you, guys. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye.